All right, Don, welcome to our show. I How are you doing? I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. All right. So tell us a little bit about your background and tell us about uh, what you're going to talk about today. Well, uh, my background, um, I am trained as an exercise physiologist. I, I did my graduate work back at Ohio State back in the, the mid 80s. Um, I have been a professor in the exercise sciences for 27 of the last 37 years. Uh, but while I've always taught, I've always kept a foot in industry as well, whether it's uh, technology, working with elite groups, um, things like that. But um, uh, about five years ago, I was invited to come work with a company called Longevity Labs. Uh, Longevity Labs is the manufacturer of a product called Spermidine Life. Um, and when you start to understand the concept of autophagy and how autophagy applies to longevity. Well, someone with an exercise background, the, the science fits pretty closely. Um, so then uh, that, that's how I wound up here with you today. All right. So tell us a little bit about your background. You, you have an athletic background, correct? Uh, I am, I'm an old athlete. Um, you know, I, I turned 62 on my next birthday, so my competitive days are way behind me. Uh, but I was a I was a wrestler at Ohio State um, and did pretty good there. Um, what was interesting is that at, at, you know I went to Ohio State in 1980 with every intention of going back to Eastern Ohio and feeding beef cattle for the rest of my life. Um, but I was a good enough wrestler that I walked on the wrestling team there. And was struggling early to find, I was having all kinds of problems, particularly with injuries. And, you know, remember the early 80s, we didn't have dedicated dietitians and strength coach. We had one strength coach that had been hired three years uh, earlier that worked with football. So, you know, wrestling was, you know, we were kind of the, the lost, uh, the lost stepchildren and um, we had to figure it out. And so in my journey to figure out what it took to be competitive, I fell in love with human physiology, um, and that's and that's what really got me going. I, I went back and worked with the wrestling team again, 2015 through 2018, as a sports scientist. Um, we 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 collected about three and a half million data points a season on a wrestling team, and we got to where we could predict. Uh, we 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 could diagnose problems with athletes that were underperforming. We could use uh, a lot of this data for exercise prescription. Do we go harder? Do we go less? And it was actually using a term called heart rate variability, which is a measurement of resilience, um, we got to where I could predict who was going to be an All-American in the national tournament at the end of the season, first day of the tournament. I could get the measurements that morning. I knew who would be an All-American the third day. So it was a really cool experience. Um that again, you know, listen, we're all product. We stand on the shoulders of those who went before us, right? And and it was a, it was a great opportunity to really apply. I call myself an applied physiologist. I don't. I, I do some research, very little. I mainly interpret research and apply it for individual use. Um, so you know, that's kind of how I wound up where I'm at now. So tell us a little bit about. Um Spermidine. So spermidine is uh, it's a it's it's kind of a funny story. So uh, a fellow I was working with um, calls me one day and he says, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm looking for a project." And he said, "So what do you know about autophagy?" And I said, "Well, I have a passing understanding of it." I said, "I don't have a, a deep understanding of it." And he said, "Have you ever heard of this thing called spermidine?" I'm going, like, "Nope, that's a new one." Um, and I have a very good friend that is a very, very good human performance guy. And I texted him and I said, what do you know about spermidine? And my phone auto-corrected um, and the message says, what do you know about spermicide? And um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and he sent me, he sent me a note back. He says, are you talking about spermidine? I said, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um and, and so it was, that was kind of a, you know, stumbling into something. Um, that was the first time I've heard of it. And it's, it's a molecule that we've known about for hundreds of years. Literally, uh, on to Anton van Landhoek, the guy who invented the, the, the microscope, 
obviously a freak because it didn't take him long before he had his semen underneath his microscope. And, you know, I don't know what he was looking for. You got to remember before that, we didn't know about sperm and things like that. You know, that was still microscopic, but, you know, you give a man a, give a man a pencil, he'll draw a penis. You give him a microscope. He looks at his semen under it. When you give him the <laughs> We'd given the microscope to a woman who, th who knows how much further along we'd be right now. Um, but, you know, we, we, Anton van Leeuwenhoek was the first to describe it. And then a, a group of Dutch researchers named it about 200 years later. Again, in the science, it floated around for several, for several decades. In the 80s, they started to look at spermidine in context of, in, the, in oncology. We're never able to get it. But it wasn't until 2016 when we when there was the Nobel Prize for autophagy that we started to get a framework for like, oh, this is where this molecule belongs. And and Dr. Frank Medeo at the University of Graz in Austria did some of the early work on this. He was used spermidine with senescent cells, and he was able to reverse the senescence in some cells by with the application of spermidine. And and as you continue to watch the research on this, is that you know, it's, it's, it's a key element in the autophagy pathway. So, you know, we, we, we now know so much more about the value of autophagy and how it applies to health and longevity. Well, and, and we're starting to understand that spermidine is a key molecule that is required to be on board to have autophagy function in the cells. So talk a little bit about autophagy. Educate us on, on our listeners and viewers what that is. So autophagy the, is Latin for self-eating. So it's it's a process that exists in every one of your cells. And and I like to the an analogy I like. Imagine living in a cabin in the woods. And you know, when everything's fine, you go out, you chop wood, you bring it into the cabin, you split it, you throw it in the fire, and that's where you get your heat from. But if you get a bad winter storm and you're snowed in, you can't go out and get firewood. So all of a sudden you've got to deal with what's in the cabin. So if you've got an old broken chair that you've not used in a long time, you throw that in the fire and you get energy from it. Well, autophagy is largely the same is that when we have energy coming into the cells, the cell says, hey, everything's fine. Just keep going, doing what cells do. They make proteins, they reproduce. But in a period of fasting, in, 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 in nutrient uh, uh, loss of nutrients, we don't have signaling that cell says, hey, we don't have this energy coming in. So let's go in and clean up what's already there. So when your cell makes a protein, um, you know, when the right when you get the signal through the mTOR and the ribosome goes and gets the, 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 the necessary signaling to make a protein, and that happens, not all those proteins are made correctly. And if a protein is misfolded or if there's a problem, it just sits there in the cell, doesn't go anywhere, it just creates, it's like having junk in your cabin. Um, so when you have autophagy, that, that process cleans up those old proteins or you'll have organelles like mitochondria that age, that, that, that you want to get out of the cell. Uh, autophagy is a key process. And when we look at autophagy that is generated from spermidine supplementation, we see five major benefits. Number one, well, we see an upregulation of autophagy. We see the application of spermidine into the cell. We see an upregulation of autophagy. We see an immune response. We see improved immune response. And if you think about your immune system in the cell, if you've got a cell that's full of junk, that immune system's not going to work as well. And in fact, you know, going through the the, the last pandemic that we went through, we actually have a paper that came out of Berlin that showed that human immune cells uh, supplemented with spermidine stopped COVID transmission 85, 90, 92 percent of the time. So that improved immune response is one of the benefits of improved autophagy. We have improved myocardial performance, both in the heart and at, at the vascular level. We have improved neural performance. If you think about dementia and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the buildup of those tau proteins. Well, where are those proteins coming from? Those are proteins that are formed. They're sitting in those neural cells. And they're not doing anything. They eventually create problems. Well, as you upregulate 
autophagy, you lower that level of protein buildup in the cells. We have a pretty good paper, another one out of Berlin, out of the shot today in Berlin, that shows that supplementation of spermidine stopped the development of dementia. We didn't reverse it yet, but it stopped the development of dementia. So uh, we look at, and then, and then finally, the fifth benefit is upregulated uh, epithelial stem cell production. So the stem cells that eventually become your skin, your hair, your nails, um, these are upregulated. And in fact, when people start using spermidine three to five weeks after, the, mo the, the thing that we hear the most is they notice their fingernails start growing like crazy. Um, and that's that upregulation of epithelial stem cells. Um, we, we're starting to see the role of spermidine, autophagy, and wound healing. When you have that wound, that's a very dynamic cellular environment. So you throw, you put some spermidine, and we're actually looking at it both uh, internally and, um, and externally, working at both levels. Um, you start to see an improvement of that epithelial stem cell. We've got interesting data coming out of Italy looking at improved gut performance. So, you know, we're, our spermidine comes from wheat germ. We extract it from wheat germ in, in the Dumbas region of, of Central Europe. But so there, there'll be a tiny amount of gluten with our product. But we have, we have a lot of celiac patients who use our product because the, the level is so low. But the benefit of the improved gut environment and the improved, the tightening of the joints in the gut from the improved epithelial stem cell uh, performance um, winds up being a benefit. Janet, what kind of questions do you have for Don? Okay, so typically, um, my my viewers, what which which clients would probably benefit most from a product? So like I this? I think I think you're going to look at I think you're going to look at someone who has said, you know what, longevity is really important to me. You know, I I go back to. Um, you know, when the, when the, when the pandemic started, I distinctly remember this interview with this Detroit bus driver. This guy is on TV, says, yeah, people are getting on the bus. They're coughing all over me. This is early on in the whole pandemic. And then like two weeks later, this guy's dead. Okay. And I think about that guy and I'm thinking, you know, this is just a guy living in Detroit, trying to make a, you know, trying to make a buck, gets up, goes to work. This guy's not thinking longevity yet. He's just thinking, how do I get through the day? Probably has a horrible diet, doesn't exercise. Again, he's just trying to stay alive in Detroit driving a bus. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be the person that's going to be asking about spermidine. I think the person is asking about spermidine who has said, you know what? I fasting is fasting is a is a cultural behavior that's in all religions. OK, and and remember, religion is the is the collection of behaviors that came together before we had science. You know, before we had mathematics and science, we had religion putting Oh, look, these people don't eat. Let's not eat. And we get healthier, you know. And, that, and when you look at all the religious practice, fasting is one that goes through. So what is fasting? Well, fasting is driving that 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 autophagy pathway, um, not eating daylight to dark is a good behavior. Adding exercise is a good behavior. So I think your patient that's going to benefit from this one, what we know is that spermidine declines with age. So does autophagy declines with age. And we know that when we supplement spermidine, we raise autophagy. We know a couple other things too. When you look at blue zones, um, you look at blue zones, they have spermidine rich diets. Most blue zones do not have commercially prepared food. Most blue zones foods are coming from their own gardens. They're coming, so they're very nutrient dense. Um, most of us, I mean, you know what? I got to go to the grocery store today. I'm going to go pick up a bunch of food at the grocery store and throw it in the fridge. 99% of it will be industrially produced. Um, and when that happens, a lot of nutrients get washed out. We have to recognize that. Just, you know, we look at we look at industrial produced food and we look at proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, which is fine, but it's the micronutrient density that's so critical. And spermidine is one of these micronutrients. Well, what we know is that unless you unless you supplement with spermidine exogenously, it's going to continue to decline. 
Now, if you're lucky enough to live in a blue zone or have your garden, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I grew up on a big farm in Eastern Ohio. My mom, you know, we were dirt poor and my mom and dad had three boys. I'm the, I was the smallest one in the family standing about six, one, I finished up about 290 pounds when I was in college. My younger brother, six, eight. I mean, that kid could eat a horse. Um, but you know, we had two huge one acre gardens that, that we got green beans and tomatoes and potatoes and corn and just everything you can imagine. And they got fertilized with the barns that we cleaned three or four times a year, you know, not the best job in the world, but the nutrient density of our food was ridiculous. Um, you know, not, I don't have access to that anymore. Um, and so we've got to take a look at what are we missing? Do you know, listen, Walter Longo taught us with the with the um the fasting and imitating diet. If you compress your your calorie consumption, most people think of diet as compressing calories in numbers. Walter Longo taught us if you compress your calories in time, don't worry about the number, compress the time. There is a significant health benefit from that. Well, we take a look at that. Not only do we want to get the nutrients in in a fixed time space, we want to make sure we have those key elements. And, and spermidine is just one of those nutrients that we've learned relatively recently. Again, the Nobel Prize for autophagy was given in 2016. You know, we're so freaking bleeding edge on this right now. It's crazy. But that person, to go back and answer your question, you know, I've kind of gone along with a big tangent here. Right. Um, but to go back and answer that question, it's that person that says, you know what? I'm fasting. I'm paying attention to what I'm eating. I'm exercising. That's part of my daily lifestyle. I'm making sure I have a nutrient-dense diet. I'm paying attention to that. I'm paying attention to my sleep. I'm paying attention to light that I get on, the type of light that I get on my skin. Then you've got someone who's, who's trying to get the most out. And, and that's, that's the person I think of. I think of, when I think of longevity, I don't know about you guys, but I think of life in three thirds. I spent the first third of my life learning in school. And then I spent the second third of my life in service. Um, my wife and I have a daughter who moved out of the house January 2nd, two years ago. She took a coaching job up in Chicago we were done, you know, she wasn't coming home. You know, she was, she was, you know, she flew the nest. Um, we started our third, third. We started the third of our life that's ours. And I want that to be rich. It's our third. It's, it's our time. You know, consequently, I'm coming to you right now from my office. It's in a 42 foot fifth wheel trailer. We sold our house two years ago and moved into a fifth wheel and have been traveling the country ever since. Um, you know, so in two years, we've got uh, we're up to 32 states. We've been to 32 states. I've been in 10 national parks in the last year. Um, we're enjoying our third third. I mean, we're just getting started looking for that where we're going to settle in the next in the in the in the next part of our life. But I think it's that patient that's that person. And we should probably shouldn't use the term patient. It's the person who is doing their best to stay away from dis-ease, to do their best to stay optimized, to not be a patient, to extend health span, to have health span mirror lifespan. That's the person that's going to be, that's going to really uh, pay attention to what's going on with spermidine. So how is it dosed? How do you take it? That's a good, that's a, listen, that's a great question. We, um, so we, when we first started selling spermidine in the United States, the European Union said we were allowed to sell a product that delivered spermidine at a rate of one milligram a day. That's what we were approved to do. It took us about a year to 18 months to figure out most people need more than one milligram a day. And with that, we've had science going on the whole time. We've measured safety up to 20 milligrams a day. But the products that are most popular are, are we have what's called a, a, an extra plus. This is a two milligram a day product um, that is our most popular product. But if you want more, we have uh, products that come in sachets. We can only we have a we have a two, three, and six mill 
six, six milligram product um, that uh, the, the three and the six come in sachets uh, that you just mix in water and drink. But um, I, you know, I don't, I haven't, although I looked at this data not long ago, I don't remember it. I would say close to 85% of our customers are purchasing the two milligram product. Um, you know, it's a couple, it's a couple capsules you take once a day. Um, and then the difference that 15%, you know, we have a, there was a really interesting paper that came out on liver autophagy and fatty liver disease. You know, we used to think fatty liver was a function of high fructose corn syrup consumption, or this is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, yeah, right. which, which, you know, the metabolism of alcohol and non-alcohol, the, the metabolism is very similar. It still results in a fatty liver, but you consume too much high fructose corn syrup and it starts to look like alcohol in your liver. Well, what we're starting to see is that as you upregulate liver autophagy, it helps manage fatty liver disease and reverse it to a certain degree. So, you know, is, is fatty liver, no one's endorsing high fructose corn syrup, don't get me wrong, but is the real problem the lack of a molecule that facilitates that autophagy process in the liver that lets you metabolize those lipids in the liver so they don't start to build up? Well, we've got a nice, this is, you know, several of the doctors we work with have said, you know, when they have someone who presents with non-alcoholic fatty liver, they don't have a lot of tools to use with that individual. Well, most of them have gone to high dose uh, spermidine supplementation and have been very happy with the results. So if people, what's the best way, do you guys have a website that you can send people to if they have more questions about this? Yep, you can go to so the um, so spermidinelife.com. We are and we're we're a subsidiary of an Austrian company. Our our main company was based in Austria. If you go to spermidinelife.us, S P E R M I D I N E life L I F E dot U S. That's our main website. Um, you can find us on all the social platforms: Facebook, Insta, and so forth. I don't know if we're on on Twitter or not anymore. Uh, who is? But um, <laughs> that's a whole other discussion, right? Um, but, another subject. Um, <laughs> yeah, another subject. But um, but yeah, that's spermidinelife.us is a great place to learn about us. Awesome. So as we wrap this podcast up, Don, um, what do you have a passion for? Oh, uh, what do I have a passion for? You know what's funny? So when I was at Ohio State, I, I love this. If, if it doesn't come through, I'm telling you, I love this. I love teaching and learning and communicating. So I was, I was at OSU back in my alma mater working with my old team. And I thought that was my last job. I thought, okay, I'm settled. I'm, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to wire myself in. It didn't work out that way. And I wound up leaving Ohio state to go work in the cannabis business down in Florida. Um, Mainly because one of my specialties, the thing we picked up with the wrestling team was understanding heart rate variability and how to use that as a key performance indicator in my athletes. Well, while I'm doing this, I'm getting incoming from around the country, pro coaches, people like that saying, what do you know about THC and HRV? I'm, I don't know anything about it. I said, my guys are NCAA athletes. And finally, a friend of mine calls me one day. He says, you want to work in the cannabis industry? And I said, yes, I want to learn this. So I moved to Florida. I take this. I leave Ohio State. I go to Florida. You know, it was one of those deals. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse, right? So I go down there, and, I, and I'll tell you, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in my apartment in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. My wife and my daughter are back in Ohio, and I'm thinking, what the hell just happened? You, know, you went from this really cool job with this really cool sport, and now you're selling weed in South Florida. And, <laughs> and it was, I was actually working with a medical cannabis group, and, it was, and I, I took a step back, and I said, and I, I heard someone on a podcast one day, and they said, don't define yourself on what you do, but develop a personal mission. And I sat back and I thought about that. And my personal mission is helping individuals understand the, the changes necessary to alleviate suffering and contribute to the betterment of well people. That's that's Don Moxley. That's what I do. And and when I started when I started to change my mindset to that point, oh my God, things started to blossom. You know, I understood why I was why I was selling weed in South Florida. I understood 
you know, you know, what are the advantages here? And, and they're certainly significant. Um, so that's my passion. You know, I talk about passion in all of my talks. I, I, I tell the story. You know, I've coached Olympic medalists. I've coached professionals in all the three major, uh, pro, four major pro sports. Um, I've worked with amazing people. My favorite coaching job ever was my daughter's eighth grade field hockey team. I am looking forward to coaching my grandkids and being that crazy 80 year old wrestler that still walks into a wrestling room. You know, five years ago, my nephew qualified for the Florida state wrestling championships and I got to go down and, and, and work out with him for a day. And, and you know, so he, he's a big kid. He wanted to play in division one football. He was a center on a division one football team. And I was still pretty good compared to a high school kid from Florida the first day, the second day, I was a wreck. I mean, anybody right. could beat me the second day. Um, but um, but I want to be, I want to keep that, that vibrance. I want to keep that ability to, I'm going to use a term here. It's not, I want to keep that ability to fight. Um, and, and you know what, at the end of my life, my, my, my hope is, is that I'm hiking the Grand Canyon and I slip and I enjoyed the ride down, um, but before I slip, I want to be engaged and moving, and that's kind of what drives me. Yeah. Absolutely, I totally understand that and respect that. Or so step in front you of definitely helps us realize. Th yeah, thank you for being on, Don. You've definitely helped us realize our goal, which is to educate and empower individuals to take charge of their own health. So, we'll um, uh, edit this podcast and stream your website. And thank you for our, all your wisdom and knowledge today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, you can find me on all the socials. If you go to LinkedIn, Don Moxley on LinkedIn, you'll find me there. That's the best way to communicate with me. Um, or you can just go through our website and they'll get you to us, to me. Sounds good. Thank you. And listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Jan and Adam. Tune in Thursday for our midweek podcast, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for listening. Health Solutions with Sean and Jan and Adam. Thank you.